All right, 11.30, looks like it's about time to start. Um, so first of all, thank you guys for coming and uh, coming to learn about what's new with Math Kernel Library. Um, let me do a show of hands. How many of you guys use Math Kernel Library or are fairly familiar with it? One, two, all right. So I'll give a little bit of overview about what Math Kernel Library is all about and also explain what are some of the latest things that are out in the latest release. So the way MKL works is that after you're done with messing around with the compiler and, and using your threading model of choice, what's next? You can go look for some more canned algorithms that are you know, far less custom and more of building blocks for larger applications. And this is where your workload, um, this thing called integrated performance primitives and math kernel library intersect. And so we're going to talk mainly about math kernel library, which is our, our flagship scientific computing math library. Uh, but the key is with both of our performance libraries, they not only generate hand-tuned Intel AVX and forthcoming AVX2 code uh, with Haswell, um, but uh, they also generate all previous generations of SIMD code. So you use these canned algorithms and, and canned functions that house very deep implementations tailored for each processor as they come out. So we're not doing uh, any auto generation of SIMD code or threading. We're actually hand tuning for every processor that comes out. So you really get uh, some serious benefits from that. And these libraries do work with any compiler. So you don't have to use the Intel compiler with it if you don't want to. And as I said before, very, these are functions for common algorithms. So MKL is geared for more high performance, large scale matrix oriented math. IPP is geared for a, ver a diverse range of signal processing, image processing type applications. Um, for HPC people, MKL is usually the way to go. And of course, these are thread safe. Uh, not, not, none of them have blocking calls. Uh, you know, support a wide variety of Linux distributions, um, minimal overhead. And the key is with all these is that you're saving a lot of time reaping our hand-tuned optimizations for each of these processors that come out. So our agenda today, uh, we'll talk about how this, how MKL uniquely supports a Xeon Phi, which is the latest, uh, the latest and greatest update with Math Kernel Library, and also explain the three unique usage models that MKL brings to the table. In fact, if you look at all the different Intel programming models for Xeon Phi, Math Kernel Library is the only one that offers an automatic offload feature to where it actually utilizes both host and coprocessor with the same function call. Uh, of course, we have the compiler assisted offload. And I'll also explain exactly what it means to do native execution on Xeon Phi, particularly with Math Kernel Library. I'll also explain some difference in performance, uh, which things have we spent a lot of time optimizing, which, which things have we spent less. And then after that, we'll talk about a feature that, uh, that works across the board, regardless of whether you're running on Xeon Phi or your run of the mill Intel, Intel multi-core processors called conditional numerical reproducibility. Uh, let me get a show of hands. How many of you guys have, a, have um, experienced run-to-run non-reproducible results? Sounds like he has. Um, how many of you guys have had different answers for different processors? That looks like we got one. And how many of you guys have tried different vendors? So AMD, Intel, and PowerPC, and you've gotten some very different answers between processors. Um, some, some people have experienced that. So I'll explain how with this new math kernel library feature, you can enforce reproducibility not only run to run, not only between Intel processors, but even between uh, AMD and Intel all in the same code base. And we'll go over some more information as well. So, if you guys don't already know, uh, more people use Math Kernel Library than any other math library in the world. So the basic scientific computing libraries that you've dealt with for you know, 10, 20 plus years, BLAS, LAPAC, um, FFTW, and things like that, the way Math Kernel Library works is that you can actually keep that existing BLAS, LAPAC, FFTW calls and swap out the dependency with the MKL BLAS or MKL LAPAC or, M, or, or MKL's FFTW interface 
And without changing your code at all, you can reap the benefits of all the optimizations that we've done for that particular BLAS function. So that's a great way with, you, without even doing anything, you can you know, reap some benefits. And a lot of people don't really don't know or aren't aware of that we, we, do, we really excel with both vector math and vector statistics. So a lot of people move over to MATLAB to do some summary statistics and, and things like that. You can actually feed in a, uh, a vector data set into Math Kernel Library and call a summary statistics function and gather a bunch of information really quickly. And when it comes to running on Xeon Phi um, or just, just running code in general, those work incredibly well because they're so embarrassingly parallel. Um, another thing, you know, data fitting and, and random number generation, uh, depending on your workload, you may need that as well. But the key is, is that Math Kernel Library, we will always keep evolving it to where you can keep this one function, this Math Kernel Library function, and reuse that as, as architectures evolve and as architectures change. So we started out with just Math Kernel Library running on multi-core CPU um, to where it takes advantage of vectorization, threading, multi-core on the same processor, and multi-processors on the same board. And when the MIC uh, coprocessor, which is known as Xeon Phi right now, came out, we added additional support for that to where you didn't have to change the actual MKL calls at all or call special math kernel library calls. There's just some special things you do as far as compiling, running, and, and environment variables, as I'll show you, to get those existing math kernel library functions and your existing code running without really having to change much of anything. And then, of course, in the realm of cluster FFTs and Scala pack, we can scale to multi-core clusters with one function call, where in that function it has a wide variety of information about your cluster settings. And we also have the idea that if you have a cluster that had both regular Xeons and Intel Xeon Phi's all in the same unit, you could actually run a cluster with multi-core and mini-core. And so very interesting how the one math kernel library function potentially can run on the full spectrum of, of how many cores you have. So what do I mean by how we support Xeon Phi? Uh, we have the idea that one function call, um, we, and this is a subset of calls, as I'll explain, take advantage of both multi-core host and many-core all at the same time. And you focus more on work distribution rather than how you're going to get that on the card and how you're going to get the data back. And of course, all of our optimizations uh, for Xeon Phi include these wider SIMD bit, these SIMD instructions. So 512 bit instructions, a little hard to wrap your head around if you're going to write them yourself. Not so hard to wrap your head around if you're just going to call the function and it has all those optimizations built in. So our three models, which are unique to the entire Intel uh, Xeon Phi programming line, is that we offer this automatic offload. So IPP doesn't offer that, Intel compiler doesn't offer that. We're the only tool that offers true, transparent, heterogeneous computing. And in addition to that, you can always offload these functions, and I'll show you how to do that. And then there's, the, uh, there's also the idea that you can compile this just for Xeon Phi, drop the executable on Xeon Phi, drop the corresponding, cor the corresponding data set on Xeon Phi, and just run on the card by logging into it. Now, that sounds like a really convenient model because you don't have to change your code at all for, for Xeon Phi, especially if you're, just doing, if you're just calling a bunch of math kernel library functions. But the rest of your application needs to be highly, highly parallel because as you guys know, there's 60 cores on there and those are smaller cores. And if you have some serial aspects of your application, you need to make sure that those are few and far between because, of course, that would be running on one core. So we were doing this demo at uh, supercomputing 13 and someone was saying you know that's great that you can compile and run on native but your demo is actually running slower on native than with your compiler assisted offload and automatic offload example and I said yeah you're right and we actually looked into the code and I saw that how we were building the data set was actually becoming a huge bottleneck in the program so it was we were running that on one tiny core and it was bottlenecking our whole system so if you ever choose to run on native, make sure that your application is you know, highly parallel, you know, 98, maybe 99% parallel, to really reap the benefits of, benefits of native 
Uh, otherwise, you can run into some problems. Um, so the three usage models here. Automatic offload is truly uh, automatic. So you don't have to change any math kernel library call at all or in anything in the code if you don't want to. Automatically use both host and target, and it transparently uh, sends the data over to the card and it manages the execution. However, if you know better, we have controls in the API that you can do to change that. Um, that goes into compiler assisted offload to where you're explicitly controlling when and how it's being transferred and, and you're also controlling the, the remote execution. And this is used using compiler offload paradigms and directives. Maybe you've seen these, maybe you have not. We've got some code snippets today to show how to do that. And you can use automatic offload in, con in conjunction with compiler assisted offload. And as I've said before, native execution here, you're copying the input data, dropping the executable on that card, and you're actually logging into it as an independent node and just running code on there. So that, that of course, can be the fastest mode because there's no data transfer overhead, but as I've said before, it needs to be highly parallel. Um, so here's just a little convenient graph of the execution models here. So if you look, we started with multi-core hosted. Of course, in the, you know, in, the, in the offload world, you have some codes that are highly amenable to parallelizing on the, on the coprocessor. You have some that are not. Um, and you also have some codes that need balanced needs. And those are generally with the, you know, the building block, BLAS functions, um, and other things like that. And that's the idea that you could use both host and coprocessor in this heterogeneous fashion in this symmetric mode. So that would be considered the math kernel library automatic offload mode. And then, of course, the MKL native, so that's for highly parallel codes, and that is exclusively uh, many core hosted. So, of course, I've said you know, offloading is automatic and transparent with automatic offload. By default, we decide when the offload as well as the work division, but you can still fine tune that work division if you'd like. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But first, how do you use automatic offload? So, it's actually quite easy. You just either call the function mic enable, mkl mic enable, or just set the environment variable. And that means every math kernel library function through the program that's automatic offload enabled, the runtime will handle all of that data transfer and, and execution. So what if you don't have a coprocessor in there? You can still write a code base that will run on both Xeon and Xeon Phi, regardless of how you've regardless of where you've deployed this to, and it will run on the host without any penalty. And that also begs the question, well, what if you want to know that the coprocessor was there? We do have API calls within Intel compiler that you could say, hey, there was no coprocessor here. I want to output to the screen. No coprocessor available. We're bringing it back to host. Um, so you do have, those, you do have the, a, a litany of options if you want to do that. So a selective set of math kernel library functions are automatic offload enabled. So we pick the ones that, mo that, are, that are most used and what most customers have asked us for. So level three BLAS, your GEM, your TRSM, and your, and your TRMM, all iterations of that are automatic offload enabled, and as well as LAPAC3 Amigos. So LU, QR, and Cholesky, if you call any of those types of functions and call MKL mic enable, it will automatic offload all of those and uh, the, by default, decide how much on host and how much on a coprocessor uh, would be best. And um, it also would decide, do you have enough computation to offset the data transfer overhead? So if you, if you, feed, if you fed in a, a tiny you know, 1,000 element data set and you tried to automatic offload that, um, unless you forced it to, we would most likely not run on the coprocessor in that situation. We're trying to be smart and decide, OK, is this worthwhile to bring over there? If so, we're going to do it. Um, so here is how you would set the work division control. So what if you do a bunch of tests and you find, hey, you know, if I offload 70% on coprocessor and 30% on host, I'm getting a better speed up. You can actually do that from both the environment variable point, point of view or the API point of view. Um, pretty simple. You know, in this situation, we're just saying offload 50% to the first card. And you could actually, if you have multiple mic cards, you could set up your own a litany of work divisions uh, to suit your needs. So tips for, for using it. 
It only uses, only works when the matrix sizes are fairly large. So GEM, M and N two, greater than 2048, TLSM and TRMM uh, offloading when M and N are greater than 3072. And we're constantly optimizing this. You know, there's some people whose who's whole, you know, whole developer dedication is working on these for automatic offload. And, you know, we're increasing the, uh, you know, the, the type of matrices that will give better performance. But right now, things that are more square generally give better performance on uh, Xeon Phi. So what if you wanted to disable automatic offload mid-program? Mid you either set mic disable or set the work division to be the flip side, saying I want to I I divide all the work to be just on host. So here's just some tips, nothing you need to memorize right now, but things to remember if you're messing around with the Xeon Phi. Always avoid using the operating system core. Um, prevent thread migration on the host. And of course, there's different environment variables on the host and coprocessor. Uh, to make your lives uh, both a little bit easier and, and, and give more flexibility at the same time. So how would we do, you know, if you're, if you're either running an MKL function that is not from this list of, uh, of automatic offload enabled functions, or if you want to, or if you want to, you know, manage the data transfer and execution yourself with these functions, you would then move to this compiler assisted offload. And this is where you're specifically controlling it via compiler pragmas or directives. And you know, every single math kernel library under the, under the sun can be offloaded. In comparison, only a subset is automatic offload enabled. So of course, they can level, leverage the entire Intel compiler's offloading facility. And of course, you have a lot of flexibility. And we really recommend people to do data persistence. So reuse that matrix that you're working on on Xeon Phi and do multiple operations on top of that. So here is how you would do it in C. And this is the same way that you do it with uh, any, any function call that you might have with the Xeon Phi coprocessor in conjunction with the Intel compiler. So in this situation, we're saying, here's my pragma offload target with this particular mic card. I want to establish what variables are going into my function. I want to establish what variables are going into the card, and I also want to establish what variables are going to leave the card. But if you notice here, the actual SGEM call is the same as it's been for the last 10 years. So you're actually not changing fundamental MKL calls. You're, you're either changing environment variables or aspects within the API to get it to run on the card. So here's how you do it in Fortran, similar to C, except except in this situation, uh, we're doing attributes offload. We're, we're saying sgem is the function I want to, I'm going to offload. I'm going to specify my OpenMP offload target, declare my ins, uh, declare C to be an in out, so it can be both in and taken out at the same time, uh, declare OpenMP parallel sections, and within that section, call sgem. And then you end parallel sections, and you're good to go. So here is an example of the data persistence that I was mentioning. So in this situation, we're saying that we want to transfer matrices A, B, and C to the coprocessor, but do not deallocate A and B. So again, we established the pragma offload on that particular card, declare the ins, declare the in outs, and then call sgem. But notice that we're not bringing A and B back to, the, back to the host at this time. We're going to transfer matrix C1 to the coprocessor and reuse um, matrices A and B here. So in this situation, we're doing a no copy over there. This is a nice little nifty function there. And declaring in out here for C1. And then calling sgem. And so after we've reused A and B here, then we deallocate A and B off of the coprocessor, and we're ready to go. So in that, in that fashion, we minimized uh, some data transfer, and we're able to work on, uh, to work that SGEM on the data set uh, much more quickly. So here's some tips. So I've said before, use data persistence to avoid that unnecessary data copying. And as I said before, avoid using that one operating system core. Always, good, always useful to use huge pages. And you know this value of 
of mic use, two megabyte buffers is a, more of a threshold. So you know, allocations of 64K bytes or larger will uh, use those huge pages. So if you want to use automatic offload and compiler-assisted offload in the same program, which a lot of people do, the only thing you need to do extra is set the work division explicitly uh, for automatic offload. And otherwise, all those ex automatic offload calls will be executed on the host. It's just, some, it's just a, a little wrinkle there if you're using both in conjunction with the Intel compiler's automatic offload facility. So native execution by far is the simplest mode. Um, needs to be highly parallel, but it is the simplest mode. So programs can be built to run just on coprocessor by just adding this one build option. So you then you'd build, you'd build it, drop your executable on there, drop your corresponding data set it on there, and execute it by logging directly into the card. Um, it's always advised that for your, uh, you know, for both your math kernel library code and with your code in with your code in general, if you're running native mode, is to use the max number of threads on there. Uh, thread affinity, affinity setting, that's usually what, the, uh, what we recommend. And we have no shortage of information on this Intel Developer Zone Xeon Phi portal on best known methods for using native, best known methods for compiler-assisted offload, and automatic offload. Um, and I'll give you some of the links for that in a minute. So suggestions for different usage models. Um, choose the native execution if it's highly parallel and you want to use that coprocessor as an independent node. Automatic offload when you have a sufficient byte to flop ratio that makes that offloading beneficial. And you're using, obviously, the automatic offload functions that we've enabled. Um, and this is an evolving list, so if there's Oh, by the way, it's the latest release uh, does have LUQR and Cholesky. So this was a, this is a hot off the presses information. So use compiler-assisted offload if there's enough computation to offset that data transfer overhead. And of course, you can always run on the host if offloading does not achieve that better performance. And what's interesting is that a lot of people with Math Kernel Library, they make a lot of their decisions based on looking at our performance charts. And on the Math Kernel Library page, we have a wide list of both the latest Xeon and Xeon Phi performance numbers. And people also make decisions based on, let me run the code on, on Xeon Phi, let me run it on, on host, and let me see which one works better, and from, from here on out, make that decision. It's great that MKL is so flexible with not having to actual, actually change the functions and to do some very quick runs on Xeon Phi and it's by far one of the easiest models to run on that card. And people can, go, people can pick different functions that work, bet, that work well on Xeon Phi and different functions that work on host better. And you can mix and match um, to really uh, make the most out of the, out of the hardware that you have. So here's how you link. So automatic offload is the same way that you build code on Xeon. Pretty interesting. So you don't even, you don't even change your code at all. Uh, native, you just add that 1M mic uh, parameter there. And compiler-assisted offload, use something called offload option. So it's saying, you know, Intel compiler, uh, the max optimizations, I want to use OpenMP, I'm going to use MKL. And now I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to be offloading with this mic card. Um, and here's some, here's some of my other dependencies. And here's the executable that I want to generate. So uh, this is actually the same way that you that you use code if you had a if you had some some functions that you wanted to offload that you wrote yourself on the card so no change there here is one of the most useful tools that my team has ever created and it's amazing how many math kernel library users use this as you might think in using a library you know a performance library that is made to run in you know almost every processor under the sun, coprocessors, clusters, uh, you know, almost every operating system and distribution that high-performance comp high computing people need. There are a lot of options here. And we've created this thing called the Link Line Advisor, which helps you pick out the right link options, because sometimes these link lines can be quite lengthy. You can specify what version of math kernel library, OS, compiler, architecture, how you're going to link. 
open your OpenMP library, your cluster library, you know, all these different things, and it will spit out the entire link line that you want to do. Um, people use this as their bread and butter. Um, we actually use it ourselves because who wants to look into the reference manual and, and learn how to create your own build line if you don't have to? It's pretty useful. So here's what we've done lately with performance. So we're spending you know, a lot of time on, the, of course, the blahs, the sparse blahs, um, F FFTs, 1D, 2D, and 3D. Uh, vector math li library it works uh, is by far our best performing stuff because it's so highly parallel. Um, and random number generation random number generation is also a constant optimization that that we do. Um, so where to find more code sample examples? When people say I want to do my own hello world for automatic offload, compiler assisted offload, and native execution, we always recommend you know, you can go through some of these samples with the Intel compiler, but if you go through math kernel library, all, it's, it's, so, it's so easy to simply verify that you're, that you're able to compile, build, and run with all three compute models very quickly. So we have an automatic offload SGEM example, which is just wonderful because you just compile it the same way you compile it for Xeon, and it, it can run on the Xeon Phi card if it's available right away. So it's a great way to just say, okay, is my card installed? And is it, is it running? Is it doing basic compute stuff? Um, great way to get that started. And you can take each one of these examples and compile that for native and see how it performs, as well as try some of these more uh, interesting functions as well. So it's a great way to get started with uh, many core programming with Intel, and of course a great way to get used to running on uh, math kernel library on Xeon Phi. So if you ever want to learn more about this stuff, um, intel.com slash software slash Mike and Mike developer, you know, we have probably several, anywhere between 50 to several hundred different articles, almost, uh, you know, some of them involving math kernel library, some of them involving the Intel compiler, um, but all of them, is, if you want to do a specific thing for offloading for Xeon Phi or automatic offloading, we've tried to leave no stone unturned with resources and sample code to get started uh, on Xeon Phi and Math Kernel Library. So last but not least here, since we've pretty much explained how to use Math Kernel Library in every which way on Xeon Phi, we'll talk about just running general code. Um, with Math Kernel Library and a little bit of the compiler, as they're calling Intel Composer right now. So, the way numerical reproducibility works with Math Kernel Library is that it works on any Xeon processor under the sun. We have not yet branched out to reproducibility with Xeon Phi because we're focused on just getting maximum performance at this time. So when, we, when you're thinking about reproducibility within Math Kernel Library, be thinking about our, our, our line of multi-core processors. We have not branched out to Xeon Phi yet, but these methods do work with the Intel compiler uh, altogether, as I'll explain. So why is this happening? I'll go, some, some people might be well aware of this on their day, uh, for a daily basis. Some people may not. Um, but we'll explain how you can alleviate some reproducibility problems specifically with the Intel compiler and go into the new features that Math Kernel Library brings to the table. So I'm sure you guys have seen something like this. Oh no, look at that. Run to run non-reproducible results. Um, can be quite, quite a pain. Um, or interprocessors here. You're getting a completely different answer across processors. Um, and then, of course, that also can happen to intervendor. Why is this happening? It is because associativity is not always preserved in the world of floating point optimizations for these latest processors. I didn't have anything to do with it. Um, you know, you'll have a lot of don't get me started with some, with some of the founding fathers for floating point math with this sort of thing. But in this double precision example, in a perfect world, to the negative 63rd plus one plus minus one would get you to the negative 63rd. But in today's world, um, with some non-deterministic optimizations out there, especially with threading and multiple code paths with vectorization, 
these parentheses can be realigned and get you completely different answers. And 2 to the negative 63rd might seem like a very tiny, tiny number, but if you're doing millions of computations, that can add up and lead to some bad answers. So why, why, why is this happening? You know, it doesn't sound like a good thing at all, but it's all in the name of aggressive optimizations. So many of these optimizations require a change in the order of operations. So code path, you know, we've got AVX, AVX2 coming out, you've got SSE, um, and then you go all the way down to, you know, SSE, SSE 3 and 2. They're using the features that were available on that processor at that time. And, you know, that, that leads to a lot of non-determinism if you're dispatching a different code path for a different architecture. Of course, you know, um, non-deterministic task scheduling. So these, some of these algorithms use asynchronous task scheduling to get more performance. And this is all in the name of getting better performance. And we're doing some things with both the Intel compiler and math kernel library now uh, to still reap performance, because obviously you're using a performance library to get performance. Otherwise, you wouldn't use it. So why, why is these important? Of course, you know, technical legacy, debugging, legal and customer perception. Not going to go too much into that, but you know, reproducible results are important for a lot of different people. Um, so what are the ingredients? So you can use some different compiler features, and I'm going to go over one or two today, and then I'll go how to do that, how to enforce guaranteed reproducibility with Math Kernel Library every time with some very simple API or environment variables. So let's we'll start with the Intel compiler. So this FP model switch lets you choose these floating point semantics at coarse granularity. So you can actually set the compiler rules for value safety. Um, you know, how, how you want to evaluate certain floating point expressions um, and how you can work with, you know, fuse multiply adds and, and things like that. Um, what do we recommend if you're just, if you want to experiment with FP model, not spend too much time looking into how it works in the, in the reference manual, I'd stick with precise. So this recommendation yields not only a reproducible result with standards compliance for both C++ and Fortran, um, and the bottom line is it allows value safe optimizations only. Um, you can experiment with, experiment with other ones, but precise is the great way to start without having to read too much about it. Um, so here's an example with what would happen in, the, in FP model precise here. So if you notice in this loop here, we're doing C plus very, very tiny number here. And in this situation, it would disable that reassociation no matter what. Inform it enforces st C standard conformance from left to right. Um, this may carry a significant performance penalty, but still reaps some performance benefits. You know, if it just depends on how important reproducibility is for you in your particular situation. So here's some ways to, to, to uh, alleviate run to run variations here. So of course, data alignment may vary from run to run due to changes of your, you know, your uh, memory environment. So you know, memory allocation of a string, it can take date, date, time, username, and directory. The compiler may peel off different iterations off of the start of the loop until subsequent memory accesses are aligned so that main loop kernel can be vectorized efficiently. Um, you know, to avoid these run-to-run -run variations, we have an Intel compiler memory allocation and a math kernel library uh, memory allocation. And or compile this with FP model precise or without the fast math um, in order to enforce run-to-run -run re re repeatability with the Intel compiler. Now, so, so that seems, a, a, you know, a little complicated because it's just the tip of the iceberg and what the compiler allows. Now let's go into a math kernel library after mentioning some different performance impacts here. So if you're using FP model and pre precise, uh, with this particular benchmark suite, we were looking at a 12 to 15 percent uh, performance reduction. So not too bad uh, in the grand scheme of things uh, with, this, with this larger benchmark suite. Um, so how did we handle reproducibility historically in the case of MKL? Through November of 2011, we told people to align the input and output arrays using that, um, 
using the MKL malloc. Call sequential MKL, and that meant that you had to handle the threading yourselves. And, they, and then they came to us and said, well, why are we using a performance library if, that, if we have to do all that? So we said, all right, let's create a feature that reaps benefits of the performance library, but does deterministic task scheduling and code path control, because that is what was causing these different results. And the goal for us is to achieve the best performance possible for your cases that require reproducibility. So this deterministic task scheduling, it's saying that you know, we're ensuring that these floating points uh, operations occur in the, in the right order to ensure reproducible results. And code path control is most important, especially with high performance computing people, especially with the transition from SSE to AVX. So this maintains a, com a consistent code path across processors. This does mean that if you need compatibility from, say, SSC 4.2 all the way up to AVX2, this would mean that that AVX2 processor would be running SSC 4.2. But that does mean that across all the processors, you'd be getting the same answer every time. For those that, uh, that really need that, that can be a huge benefit. Uh, so that does mean a little bit less performance on the latest processors. But you know, it's, it's a trade-off that, that you have the freedom to make nowadays. So here are the very simple controls to enforce this. So we, I showed you all these different things that the Intel compiler can do. Um, you know, a lot of different options. With Math Current Library, we kept it very simple, ranging from maximum compatibility all the way down to maximum performance. So let's think about the, the, you know, the, the craziest case. Really old AMD processor, really old Intel processor. Or, or some, or really, really new AMD processor, really old Intel processor. This function call, once you set this anywhere in your, in your code, it will say, hey, all math kernel library functions from here on out, I want you to create a base optimization that will not change regardless of what vendor processor I'm running on. So yes, that will strip, strip it down to the most basic optimizations common to both AMD and Intel. Um, so this would say, for Intel or Intel compatible CPU supporting SSC2 or later, you would use either the environment variable MKLCBWR equals compatible or the function call. So suppose you needed a little bit more compatibility but restricted within Intel and you needed something within the SSC2 or later. This function call you do SSC2 or environment variable SSC2, and it would say that every processor I'm running on, doesn't matter what it is, you're only going to do the SSC2 code path optimizations regardless of what processor. Um, same thing with SSC 4.2 or AVX. So those are the three ways that you, you know, there's, also, there's actually far more options on top of that. But that was before in, inter Intel processor reproducibility. Next is my favorite mode, which most people have, most people are afflicted by. A lot of people know what process, you know, what they're running on at all times. This gives you the most performance. It just means that it's only on the machine that you're running on. So this saying, I'm going to do the same optimization with threading every single time. And you know any reassociations I might do, I'm not I'm not going to change that during the next run. It would be MKLCBWR auto in this situation. So this would reap the highest performance, but you would make sure that you know it's only on this rig that I'm running on, uh, or or only on an identical rig that I'm running on would get the same answer. So why did we just call it conditional? First things first, it's a new feature, and we're and we're you know. Still, still gathering feedback and trying to improve it, but we're keeping it within certain silos for now. Based on everyone that we've polled, they've said that this seems to be fairly reasonable. We don't have a lot of people saying, "Well, I need, you know, I need thirty, I need sixty-four and thirty-two bit Linux compatibility, reproducibility across all across the board, or, or inter inter operating system vendor." So. This is saying that within a certain operating system, and blue, you know, blue only applies within these blue boxes, not between them. 
And you know, if you upgrade to the latest Intel Math Kernel Library version, you know, we, we do all sorts of new optimizations for, for performance um, as, each, you know, as each version comes out. So this reproducibility controls only affect the MKL functions. So these other tools and other parts of your code can still cause some variation. Um, and, that, and that would be the situation where you'd use the Intel compiler um, in conjunction. So we really want people's feedback um, based on this feature. Um, and it's, it seemed to be um, great. It seemed, there seems to be a, a decent interest in it uh, where people want to try it out. Um, here is an interesting graph about the, how this math kernel library feature affects the performance of our Intel, Intel Linpack benchmark. So you notice here we have some difference in peak performance with just turning, out, turning in the feature, all to go, all, turn feature off altogether. Um, and there's also you know, the difference between um, if, you're, if you're setting the SSC 4.2 code path, and then there's the idea that of, of setting the, with the Limpact benchmark, setting it between IA and AMD processor. So not something you need to memorize, but if you're, if in, in these sorts of performance numbers are on our website, if you're trying to gauge a future decision on when you'd use MKL and when you'd use, and you, when you'd use the CNR feature, um, this is an interesting way to help you make a decision. Um, so here's some interesting things that we're looking at in the future. Um, so uh, you know, the idea of reproducibility across 32 to 64-bit operating systems, reproducibility between MKL different versions, and also the idea of if you're going to run this, if you ran this on native with Xeon Phi and you ran this on, on, on regular Xeon, um, we have not a lot of we have not had a lot of people saying that you know uh, I need this I need the same answer each time, but it is something that we're looking into um, in terms of prioritization and improving the feature. So you know, these are all different things that that we're looking into. Um, so we've got a lot of different resources on reproducibility for these links. So you can uh, these slides are I sent these to the organizer and you guys can download these. Um, we have no shortage of information going over. Um, you know, how to run on Xeon Phi with Math Kernel Library, how to use this new conditional numerical reproducibility feature, how to enforce reproducibility between Fortran and C++ uh, with the Intel compilers, um, and our user forum, if you ever submit something on there, um, we've got a whole team of 12 different time zones uh, ready to respond to forum questions. Um, you know, and we've, we're always looking for feedback and looking to see what's the next thing we can do to improve Math Kernel Library. So, you know, summary here, you know, MKL runs on Xeon Phi. It does some things that no other Intel programming model can do, particularly the automatic offload. And if you're writing code for reproducible results, um, FP Model Precise is a great way to start and use this new CNR feature if you're calling Math Kernel Library functions. And of course, Math Kernel Library is in practically every Intel developer tool uh, that, that, our team, that our team is out there, for, uh, out there selling. So... Um, let me open up the floor for questions. Looks like I have finished uh, right when I was supposed to. So, you guys got any questions? I guess that's it. Thank you, guys. <laughs>